this year, LG Boots at IFA is the LG Think Home, an amazing showcase of how AI is transforming our homes. I believe IP and his distinguished panelists will have the answer. There are our standard for kind of AI which will make life even better. Not just improving what we are doing already, but fundamentally transforming how we live and shape our lives. So our job with AI is to deliver on that expression, home isn't a place, it's a feeling. It's about the kind of AI which evolves by learning through continued and accumulating interaction with people. The more you use it, the better it understands you, your living patterns, your preferences, your style, and ultimately, even your feelings. This AI chip uses LG Neural Engine, and it leverages on-device AI to process both video and audio data to enable devices to learn and evolve. That's a very powerful uh, combination. This sort of hybrid human-machine learning models, yep. um, I think, are going to be the most interesting. And uh, because of your relationship with the person in the home, yep. uh, you, you're very well positioned to take advantage of that. Very, very interesting, yeah. So evolving intelligence sounds great. And if the usability and interaction is very well solved, it will serve us in, in very many helpful ways. The challenge for your design team, at least, is to provide easy to use and understand interfaces as they are crucial yes. to make sure Absolutely. this innovation will be accepted, especially by elderly. So when you see an LG product that carries the brand LG ThinQ, what you're seeing is not just a smart product as its own pre-programmed thing, but a part of evolving AI-powered ecosystem. Uh, so LG ThinQ is much more than just a brand. Uh, it's our unified vision for this system of evolving intelligence. And as of today, I'm very proud to announce that ThinQ will now include not just our AI products, but also a whole range of IoT devices as well. It's true. It's a very exciting time uh, we are living on because uh, it's the time where we are introducing uh, the 5G uh, connectivity platform, which will allow us, uh, if up, up to today we have been connecting people, now we'll be able to connect objects around us. And this way we can rethink and reshape our uh, interaction with the environment, our homes, our houses. And, uh, this is a very important uh, revolution we are going to create in the coming years. When you couple the connectivity capabilities with the AI uh, capabilities, uh, you can really think about this uh, intelligent object, create intelligent object that can really create disruptive services. The television, for instance, knows about entertainment, and it knows that maybe on Friday the last episode of Game of Thrones is coming on. Um, the refrigerator doesn't know anything about that, and the TV doesn't know anything about buying food, but the TV can say, hey, look, Game of Thrones is coming on Friday. I know that it's a big deal. Get ready. And then the refrigerator can buy a bunch of food for oh. the party that's going to happen on oh, Friday. Really, right? really cool. Yeah. Here the goal is to make this kind of evolving learning intelligence available in every aspect of our lives. And this point really speaks to today's theme, which is anywhere is home because it's that connectedness which allows you to carry the essence of home with you wherever you go. So what we want is to have all these digital touch points in our lives to be connected, uh, from your smart TV to your refrigerator to your smartphone, your car, and even in the building, even the building that we're in. So all that, uh, these touch points can talk to each other, learn from each other, and work together to serve us, ultimately, to serve us much better. And also uh, AI combined with that. When we can combine these uh, uh, technologies, we can really rethink and uh, reimagine car and transportation systems, making them more efficient and safer. Mm -hmm. For example, a smart infrastructure can have some cameras that can detect when a pedestrian is crossing the road, and through the communication, they can tell the cars to stop or to take action to do that. Also the cars, so the autonomous cars, will be able to get also this sensing uh, information, do some fusion about these sensors, and take some appropriate decisions, thanks again to this high-speed, low-latency connectivities and car-to-car -car communication uh, capabilities to do that. 
So more and more of these home activities will now take place in cars, and that's a tremendous opportunity for companies like LG. We say LG's traditional strength is in home domain, but now all these connected smart cars are becoming basically homes on wheels. Are we getting millions and millions of new moving homes on the road? So how do we use cars in future if we call them cars? I don't know. Yeah. What else will move us from A to B, right? How can technology bring safety and at the same time make traffic efficient? Yeah. And how can we at the same time use less energy if possible? That's a real big challenge for designers as well. Uh, as you want us to give up on controlling things by ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's something very big. And trust technology to take over. That's the biggest thing at all. Yeah. So that will be a very emotional process and needs the best design and psychological skills available. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really wondering if I need a driver license or a user license. <laughs> <for that. laughs> um, the key to this is that all of these systems need to be uh, interconnected, right? You can't yes, do this without that absolutely. connectivity. Yep. Yep. And what I have here is an experimental uh, vision intelligence module, we're calling it the Vision Pack. It combines visual sensors with cloud connectivity. It's an add-on module, and it can be applied to a whole range of existing appliances. Now, the next item I want to show you is a concept in development. And we're calling this ThinQ Fit at the moment. You might have seen an earlier version of this under the name uh, Smart Mirror. It's an interactive, intelligent signage, which uses our 3D camera technology to let you measure your body size very accurately with your clothes on. Then it creates a realistic avatar with your measurements, and you can use this for virtual fitting to try on different clothes in different size, different color, different texture. And you can go all the way to payment if you want to make the purchase on the item that you chose. <laughs> Let's try on a few outfits. So it, this is your avatar. It looks like you, huh? Is that nice? So you can, you know, you can like, uh, turn this around for 360 view and look at the texture on, uh, uh, on the item. And it changes as you select different types of clothing. Maybe it's a bit different in Korea than it is in Germany, but many men here do not really like to go shopping clothes. Oh, believe me, it's exactly the same in Korea. Same? Okay. And we, we Germans like are not really known as the fashion icons in the world. It's more the Italians on my right. Yeah. right? They are no more known as the, as the fashion icons. Right? Yeah. That, that's for sure. Um, but if this idea and this product can really help, let's say, solving time for those who don't like to spend time on shopping, it's something. Of course, it can be good fun as well if you do it at home. And uh, even if you do it online, uh, you can save time as well. But I guess it can really change some things. Because if you're not sure, ask your style guide, right? Ask your consultant, what kind of color type am I? Is it warm colors or cold colors? You can save time, at least space. You, we can save energy because maybe we don't have that many returns in future. Yeah. So I like it a lot. Very, very good point. But I think LG may have a unique opportunity um, in the space. And, and why is that? Um, it's back to the data question. It's yep. the data that you're going to have access to, mm -hmm. um, because that's a, a unique data set. Um, I think y what we will see is an evolution from um, computer vision to computer understanding. Yes. Um, and one of the key concepts of this computer understanding is that the systems be open, um, systems that can talk to each other. And that's precisely why we decided to uh, open source our WebOS last year. Uh, it's an operating system for smart products. Uh, there's a dedicated website for this open source edition, uh, webos e, webos e where anybody can access the platform, build all sorts of wonderful things on it. Just last week, we went a step further uh, by offering open API for our ThinkU platform. So now our partners can freely access this great, versatile AI engine through WebOS, as well as on other popular platforms. And we are already using uh, ThinQ to power all of our uh, LG smart products, but now we want 
to go beyond that, encourage others to use this powerful tool, again, to evolve openly and to connect openly. And um, in a way, this, this demo that you just showed uh, represents that because all of the players in that ecosystem benefit. Um, the customer benefits because they have a great experience um, and they get clothes that look and, and feel great, right? Um, the fashion company benefits um, because they can make just the right clothes available for each customer um, and then they can merchandise more efficiently. LG benefits because you bring a great new product to market and can take that success and reinvest it into inventing cool new stuff for the future. Yep. Um, and I, for me, maybe most importantly, the planet could benefit. Um, there's a lot of waste in the fashion industry. It's actually um, uh, pretty bad. Yep. Um, but having a system like this means that um, maybe uh, they will never make clothes that don't have a customer. Right? Yep. So it would radically reduce waste. Mm -hmm. um, a few words. And, and to expand on the WebOS uh, considerations uh, Dr. IP made before, so we at Qualcomm expect WebOS to play a central role as an open platform for bringing together a, a diverse range of partnership uh, in order to make a connected car a reality. Mm -hmm. And with Qualcomm, we are happily uh, partnering with uh, LG mm -hmm. and implementing a reference hardware uh, of WebOS uh, based on our platform, Snapdragon platform, and we will be happy to bring it to the car industry in the coming years. And it is easy to imagine what kind of improvement it can bring in many ways. Um, but of course, services, safety, energy, mobility, or more will, will be some of the elements we, we, will, we will identify um, and get more efficient and more individual. Individuality is one of the core things of our yep. times. I've been a big fan of your display technology for years. I, I stare at your screens uh, for hours and hours uh, every day. Um, and so I'm excited to see what's uh, you know, the cutting edge with my own eyes. Um, and, and, and particularly because I think we're at a moment where um, what, what may happen soon is we may be able to recreate reality. So this is, uh, you know, what if you can't tell the difference between the real world and what you see on a screen? Yeah. That unlocks all kinds of things. So I'm curious to see how close we are we to, to that moment. Yep. Yeah. Yep. My pick would have to be LG's uh, proactive customer care, which you will be able to see uh, in our booth this year. And I choose it because uh, it has all the elements of evolve, connect, and open that we've been discussing, and eventually, ultimately, to make our, our lives even better.